Hey guys, it's the History Nerd, and we are here with a new series! I'm doing something insane. Tried another grand campaign. The last time we did this, uh, it was the Thousand Year Reich with Reich. Why did I say that? So, like, I realize I'm a native English speaker born in North America pretty much on a day to day basis. The only language I'm exposed to is English, with a hint occasionally of um, the French, but I mean, it's not even, you know, if you're European or your only introduction to French, and this is totally an aside, is um, Parisian French, Quebecois French, it's different. Um, so yeah, grand campaign, what are we going to do? It's the, the possibilities are huge. So we got to set some ground rules. Um, I've played around with uh, exporting large empires into Europa Universalis IV. Um, after the debacle that was the Eastern Roman Empire game where we wound up um, becoming a part of the Holy Roman Empire thanks to stupid marriages made by yours truly, um, I did a, I did a, another off-camera Byzantine game, and I got pretty much what I was looking for. Um, there was little sections of France and, and, and Iberia that weren't under my control, but pretty much the Mediterranean and the Black Sea were, was a Roman lake, and that's exactly what I wanted to do. Transfer that over into EU4, and my god, it was one of the most boring games that I ever played 50 years of before it was like, this is just stupid. It's, you're too powerful. And I want to kind of avoid being too powerful. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to go to the 1066 start, and we're going to do a custom game setup. Now the first thing I'm going to do is make sure it's the Stamford Bridge, because... Well, it's likely that William the Conqueror is going to become, you know, or in this case, William the Bastard, is going to conquer all and become William the Conqueror and set England on a thousand years of amazing history. There's also a chance that that won't happen. And because this is Crusader Kings 2, I want to leave as much historical possibilities open as possible. I also don't want to start way back in 769, because then we're looking 769 to what, 1455? is a long game. I mean, this is going to be a long series as it is. I don't know if starting in 769 really would add anything to it. And in fact, it would add difficulty because I don't want to get too powerful. I, I'm not a very good Crusader Kings 2 player, mind you. <clears throat> so I don't know if I will get too powerful, but my goals for the Crusader Kings 2 parts of this series are... more limited? I'll show you what I mean. So I had two ideas. I'll cover my two ideas and then we'll show you what we're doing and get actually get into the video. Terribly sorry if you find all this boring. I do apologize. Um, but hey, it's, it's my video, so I'm going to do what I want. So two ideas. Uh, the one that I didn't go for would have been um, Rise of the Hansa and just play as a family member in the Hansa and um, see what you could do with that and get the expansion of um, the Trade Republic in the North going. My other idea, but that, I mean, and that takes us to 12, what, 12, 12, 1241? So, not necessarily. There'd be some people who'd be like, you know what, History Nerd? That's not actually a grand campaign. So my other idea, where are you? Boom. The Habsburg Millennium. We are going to be starting off as uh, Werner of Argau von Habsburg in, surprise, surprise, Argau at the 1066 start. This is the earliest you can get a Habsburg, and they're not in Austria, they're in Argau. So let's go ahead, take Werner here. And go over what the plan is. Come on. Alright. Thank you. 
and we're German Catholic, you know, pretty, pretty bog standard for Crusader Kings 2 game. Now, let's take a look at the way things are going. Uh, obviously, we are a member. We're smack dab in the middle of the Holy Roman Empire, but we're on the western side of the Holy Roman Empire. So, uh, despite all the reworkings of the Horde, or of the Mongol Hordes that come in, um, it, I haven't really played a lot with them, but whenever I do, they're not as devastating as they used to be. I don't know if you remember the uh, Thousand Year Reich Austria campaign. The Mongols were pretty devastating. Um... I don't know if it's just because the mechanics have been more fleshed out, and because it's more fleshed out, the AI has a more difficult time, the bonuses are there, I don't really know. But the hordes don't seem as deadly as they used to, which is good. I've also got Sunset Invasion turned off, because I don't want Western hordes, and specifically for EU, uh, I don't want the high American tech. Now I was thinking, if I were to do another Byzantium game and port it over into EU4, despite having like the first hundred years be a, a very boring drag of I'm running all of, you know, the Mediterranean, let's just make money with trade, um, at least if you've got the High American in that case, you'll have a challenge when you go over to the New World, but I'm not planning on being that big. I'm planning on just being, being basically a kingdom. So, um, one of the nice little changes that's happened recently with Crusader Kings 2, and I say recently, it's been like the last year, uh, if you control click on the nation you're in, you can now see all of the vassals of that ruler. So before, you could see like all the vassals of France if you were in the Holy Roman Empire, but if you were in the Holy Roman Empire, you couldn't really see where Saxony was, where Messin was, uh, easily. So now you can, just by a control click, we can see you know, freaking Verona, for whatever reason, has, um, Breeskow. I don't know why, but they do. Uh, so, we're starting off here. We've got four counts in our de jour duchy of Upper Burgundy. And we can see here, Sveis and, uh, Grissons are also part of my de jour, or part of the de jour, shouldn't call it mine yet, the de jour duchy of Upper Burgundy, the title of Upper Burgundy doesn't exist yet, I don't think. Nobody owns it. it. It was, you know, destroyed in basically 1032. So, we want that title. So what we're going to do is, first off, take our Chancellor and start sucking up to the Emperor. I want him, I wish that didn't... As nice as this is, whenever you do something on the map that changes the view, it goes back. It's a little annoying, but I will find a way to work through it. Don't you guys worry. So we're just going to get our council set up. We'll take our churchman and improve religious relations with the Pope. So yeah, our goal, it's goal number one, suck up to the Kaiser. He's going to eventually create the title, and I want him to give it to me. So once we get the duchy of uh, Upper Burgundy, we're off to a start. The main goal of this campaign is going to be the creation of the Kingdom of Burgundy. That's what I want to have done by the end of CK2 for the conversion into EU4. This little bit here that's it. That's all I want. We might, I'm not gonna lie, I might make a move for some stuff in Africa, um, but that's pretty much my goal, is to form the Kingdom of Burgundy and then be the Kingdom of Burgundy um, in EU4, and then play it like a normal kingdom in EU, well, quote-unquote normal kingdom in EU4. It should be a part of the Empire. All those other things we'll address when we get there. But that's it. I don't want to be too powerful, and um, I'm hoping that it's going to work. So the idea is to build Burgundy up, not out, and to to really get get that going. Uh, one thing we need to do, though, we need to make sure we get the Emperor on our side. So if we take a look at the family, here's Werner. Uh, he's a bit of a militarist, but relatively decent stats all across. Uh, his wife, 
good in Intrigue, um, Regenland. And then two kids, we've got Otto and Ida. So Ida, she's two, and she's already got she's already got a head for the numbers. And Otto here, he's six, and he's a diplomat. Sure. Um, what we're gonna do is just to get the Kaiser liking us even more. I want to find the most diplomatically able person in his court, uh, who's preferably German <laughs> charismatic negotiator uh, charitable deceitful diligent and humble it is pretty tempting I'm not gonna lie to go for the von Babenbergs <clears throat> and um, we'll, we'll see we'll see how that family relationship develops but I think for now we'll send him to Lothar Udo the Duke of Brandenburg and that should I think boost the opinion of the Emperor? I could be wrong on that. I could have just boosted my opinion with the Duke of Brandenburg. But let's be honest, at least I'm making friends. And that's the important thing. We are going to, with our skill, really, we might be able to become Marshal, but we'll see. And we will go for... I'm thinking hunting focus. Um, just to get the Marshal boost a little bit. And the health boost isn't bad either. Uh, let's go ahead, start taking time away. Let's talk about, you know, I, I'm not gonna... Perfect, thank you. I'm not gonna min-max this. I'm not, I, I, I don't min-max anything. This is, for me, it's a role-play game, right? It's... So, um... I, what I'm really just gonna do is just try and have fun with it. That's, that's the plan. Uh, I'm not looking to make the most efficient kingdom. I'm not looking to make the best kingdom. Really, I'm just looking to form the kingdom of Burgundy by 1455. That's when the game ends. I think EU4 starts in 1444. So we'll see how we'll handle that split when we get there. But that's still 400 years away. Uh, there's not much we can build. So, yeah, I, I mean, basically now we're just kind of on autopilot. Um, waiting for the Duchy of Upper Burgundy to be created and given to us. That's the key. Because once we get a Duchy, then we'll have loads of things. And as we can see, I mean, like, knowing the geopolitical situations machinations that happen within the HRE. I'm not concerned uh, about getting Grissons here. It's a part of Lombardy, and Lombardy is going to be getting all up in the grill of the Empire. Uh, Schweiss here might be a little more difficult. Um, the Duke of Swabia is certainly going to be more powerful than we are. But then, we, you know, we'll go through, we'll get alliances, we'll do something to get our du jour land back. And then just sort of slip south into Provence. And, um, yeah, that is is one thing I do want to check. Oh, damn. I was hoping Genoa would be a part of Burgundy just for the ease of trade when we get to EU4. But, well, I'm focusing too much on EU4. We got 400 years of history to get through before we even have to consider what we're going to do for a trade empire in the Mediterranean. Uh, yeah, so, uh, really, I guess, in typical fashion of me with long games, I'll just be back when something exciting happens. Also, with this being the first video in a series, and the first video of Crusader Kings 2 that I've recorded in a very long time, let me know how everything sounds, let me know how everything looks. You know, typical first episode of a comment type of deal. And of course, if you if you do like this stuff, if you do like the grand strategy games on my channel, leaving a like is probably one of the best ways to just be like, yeah, people like this, people want to watch this. Because um, if you take a look, grand strategy. I'm just gonna get a little red, and then we'll we'll break off and we'll come back with something more exciting. But grand strategy is my favorite uh, genre of games. I love map games. Like 
This, just staring at these, coming up with political intrigue and strategies and stuff. I love this stuff. Um, but they're the least popular videos on my channel. So if you guys do like these, and I know you guys are out there, I know you're out there, I know you're watching, leave a like, leave a comment, just let me know. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited about having more grand strategy on the channel. It's been about two, two and a half weeks since I ended my Victoria 2 game. And ended it abruptly. I didn't really enjoy that, but I didn't want to have it turn into every five years. Here's another freaking great power war. Italy, have fun. So we're starting fresh. We're starting new. If this is what you guys like on my channel, let me know. And um, yeah, we'll see you guys when I've got something exciting to share. Hopefully a dukedom. See you in a bit. All right, so we got our first hunting event. Well, technically second. The first one was like, hey, should we go hunt the white stag? And I don't know why anyone would say, nah. Let's not. So, my scouts have found them. Let's saddle the horses and go find out what we can. We can see that the Holy Roman Empire is actually absolutely kicking ass against France over the De Jure War of Ghent. So, um, the Empire should be getting bigger relatively soon. Uh, the French troops are trying to rally, but, um... I don't think they're going to be able to pull that off. We got 11,000, almost 12,000 men against just over 1,000. You've gathered your followers and your hunting dog. You've saddled your horse and prepared your weapons. You're ready to set out to the hunt the great white stag. And an epic hunt it shall be. Oh, what have we got here? An open council position for my chancellor. Oh dear. And we don't have a good chancellor. Can we pull one in? Uh, invite a noble. A steward. I don't necessarily want a steward, but we'll we'll try him. I don't think that was an improvement. So I guess Gotthard, commander of Argau. I guess. Oh, but then. See, what sucks is I don't want to send a skill seven diplomat to go talk to the emperor this is not gonna go well um so instead we'll send him to so discontent in uh Schweiss there see if we can get the the count to realize he you know should be independent at least you spend weeks in the wilderness searching for any trace of your prey but to no avail great so um Stressed and Roth. What do we pick up? Stressed. It's not good. If uh, Werner here winds up dead, you know, the chance that poor young Otto would be named Duke of Upper Burgundy is pretty low, I would think. All right, well, I mean, you know, I just wanted to show off the White Stag events. Since those appear to be done, I'll be back with something exciting. See you in a bit. All right, so two interesting things. One, the war for Ghent, successful. Two, right after winning the war, the Kaiser created the title of the Duchy of Upper Burgundy. So we could go and say, hey man, hand it over. <sighs> I'm not... We'll just, we'll let him give it out. He's, he's been busy. You know, he should like us relatively. Um, we don't have anywhere near the amount of money to, to send the Kaiser a gift. <clears throat> and we didn't even have to ask to the righteous Count Werner, may you live in harmony and contentment. I have decided to grant you the Duchy of Upper Burgundy in recognition of your service and your nobility of spirit. Lovely. So, uh, we've got de jure claims we can press now, which is super groovy. Uh, we've got some commanders, which we should probably appoint. We can get two more, so we'll might as well put the Count of Neuchâtel in there. And why not uh, the Count of Bern as well? So, we've got vassals to worry about now. We're, but we're a duke! We're a duke. 
So we gotta find the vassal that likes us the least. And surprisingly, everyone likes us. This guy likes us the least, however. And he's got a ton of kids. So with our domain limit being one of three, we got two ways to approach this, right? Like we can we can save up and build another holding uh, in Argau itself. We've got the castle Habsburg, of course, uh, <laughs> the city of Schaffhausen, and the bishopric of Basel. So of course we could build another one if we wanted to. We could go and take land from our vassals, and if I were to do that, I'd tell you, uh, Bergon here, you know, that's, I mean, basically the Burgundy, I believe, um, it's rich. We might have to be plotting for Burgundy. We'll play that out. Um, and like I said, we've also got, uh, the Duke of Swabia and the Duke of Lombardy to go after as well. If we take a look, though, he's got roughly 3,000 men. He's got over 3,000 men. What do we got? Yeah, not a lot. So we can try and, you know, supplement it with uh, retinues. That's going to take a while. Really, I think what we should be focusing on is building up Habsburg. And, you know, getting militia training grounds, getting barracks, is, um, getting keeps. Get our army size up. A murmur was heard through the room when I judged the felon to death. It was a just sentence. If perhaps a bit harsh, whoever I killed had it coming, and that meant more prestige for me. So, yeah, we got we got one of two ways to go about this. And I think, initially at least, it makes mo more sense to build up Argau than it does to start turning our vassals against us. But we're going to want to do that relatively quickly, like I say. Uh, we're going to want most of, if not all of the land in Upper Burgundy being our own. I mean, I realize it's what? One, two, three, four, five, that's six uh, counties that we're going to have to hold, which is, you know, double our limit. So eventually, as the game goes on, we'll be able to control that much land. But I think initially it, it makes sense to focus more on building up. Uh, we've also got, of course, <clears throat> all the other, like, inter... Or all the other dukedoms to worry about as well. And in fact, now that I think about it, I should do my best to find... Oh, you're a bishop. That might be difficult. We could, I guess, just fabricate a claim on it and go to war with, uh... <laughs> go to war with the Emperor! That seems like a bad idea. But I think I should be able, like, I should have a claim on him, and I, yeah. So... Yeah. So as long as crown laws stay relatively low, I shouldn't have a problem going to war with a duke who I've got. So then, if I get a claim on Valet... Would I be able to just take it? Like, could I just go to war with the Prince Bishopric of Calais? Or Valais? Hmm. Something to consider. I think we should probably concentrate on getting our, our main armies up, which means... Our mainland, which means getting our armies up, which means waiting so we make money, and we don't make a lot of money, so it is going to take a while. Yippee. All right, well, I will be back when I've got some building or some events or something exciting to share. I'll see you guys in a bit. We need our lovely young six-year-old daughter Ida to go to school. So we take a look at it. Well, she did initially have a great talent for numbers, and while she is still relatively mathematically inclined, it is very clear that she is becoming quite the diplomat, much like her brother. So we're going to go to the Kaiser and say, look, the education of Otto has been great. He's coming along famously. He's temperate, he's charitable, he's a great diplomat. We're going to want the same stuff for Ida. Now, we could 
go and send her off to... You know what? We're going to send her to the Babenbergs just to start building that family connection. And we do build up uh, more reputation with the Emperor. So that's good. It's nice having a big, massive empire to educate your kids in. Because <laughs> you get so many better options than if we were just focusing in on my own court. Dear husband, your wisdom and mercy are legendary. I'd like to make sure my wife says that every time she greets me. I have discovered a plot where Mafalda seeks to kill Otto von Habsburg. And your plot. And what we will do <clears throat> is we will go to CK2. We will go... <laughs> Spoiler alert, we're playing CK2. Uh, go to the Intrigue screen. And then this this little obscure checkbox that isn't really next to anything. Obviously, the tooltip that pops up shows you immediately what it is. But that's something that's really good to check off. Because that way, um, any plot that your spy master can just end will. That means, you know, and there's tons of them. Some of them won't, and then you'll be informed that, you know, this plot, they're not gonna stop. They're stuck, um... Or th they're gonna continue on. They don't want to listen to you. Uh, but for the most part, you click that, you won't have to worry about all these random courtier who's like, I'm gonna kill the, the, the son of the duke! Are you? Well, no, I don't have the means to, so probably not. He probably shouldn't even say it then. Anyway, we're getting we're getting pretty close up here with our money. And what to build first? I think it's going to be the militia training ground, just really to bulk our numbers out. So we'll get more light infantry, we'll get more archers, and um, get a bit more bulk in our military. Because right now, if we take a look at our le oh, right. There's got to be a way that I can see the breakdown of my levies. I wish I could do that. Like, from my domain, I should be able to see the troops that I'm raising. Oh, my lovely wife sent me a puppy. Of course I'm going to accept that awesome gift. And he's going to be named... Uh, Hunter. Alright. So, I guess if I take a look somewhere in here, right? Like, this should tell me. So we take a look, what is it, 294 light infantry, 462 heavy, 63 pikemen, 315 light cav, 126 heavy cav, and 21 archers. So we are actually kind of light on light troops. So we'll rectify that problem by training more light troops. And obviously, with us being Germans, we're going to be going for the jousting lists to get the heavy cav going. And I don't... I, <coughs> ooh, excuse me. I certainly don't want to go for any sort of culture shifting. What? Why did he come home? Well, I mean, I would imagine that having the wife of the Kaiser educate my child would be theoretically well it would be good for building connections but she's not at all what I want my son to be a greedy just deceitful paranoid person no thank you um socializer proud gluttonous arbitrary brave it's not bad I guess Maybe I'll go for the Bishop of Dornick here. He's a dutiful cleric, so that could screw up old Otto. Saddle my horse. But yeah, what I'm what I really want is just a diplomatic kid. Cause in typical Habsburg fashion, I would like the expansion to be. I mean, obviously, we're going to have to do military expansion. There's no two ways around that. But I would prefer my expansion to be diplomatic. Like, hmm. If we... Oh, you won't do that. You would prefer matrilineal marriage. Shocker. 
That's not gonna happen. We're getting the stag this time, I can feel it. You spend weeks in the wilderness searching for any trace of your prey, but are forced to return empty-handed. It's my own failure, and I'll try for humble. We're still stressed, which sucks. But my dog should take care of that. Dogs are good at taking care of Animals in general are good at taking care of stress. Your dog is growing quickly and is no longer a little puppy. He runs fast and has a keen nose. Your dog handlers praise his good character. Ten prestige for having a good dog. That's crazy pants. All right, let's get the militia training ground going. Words of my pledged chastity has reached the Pope, who sent a courier with a letter and approve a letter of approval and his blessing. So, oh, I, okay, so I am chaste. That is a sign that I should be celibate. I don't know about that. Dedicate a mass to chastity. Gain piety and prestige. Thank God, quietly, I think we'll go with that. We'll go middle of the road. It's good to stay faithful to your wife or husband, but you don't have to stop having sex. That's... <laughs> that is crazy pants. <laughs> don't know why I'm so hung up on that term today, but I am, so enjoy. Uh, what do we got? Liberation of Frisia. Have we got any... factions? The Duke of Savoy, huh? Well, that might mean that you're just making yourself an enemy of the Emperor, which makes me wonder. Hmm. I guess if I'm going to expand, probably the best place to go would be for a one or two province little minor. A thousand men. This guy can't have many, though. We should... Wow, really? So it would almost be better to go for this kid and take, like, Leon here or, or something. Hmm. Hmm. No, I think we'll go... I think we'll go here. Uh, have we got a better diplomat? We should now that we're a freaking dukedom. We got the Count of Burn. He's only rank 11. He's not that good. Um, but it is better than 7, so let's start fabricating a claim on Geneva. And see where that gets us. Oh, I'm just going to let the game play out for a bit. I will see you guys when I've got something exciting to share. Everyone at court loves your dog. Especially the children find much joy in playing with him. So we got Otto and Ida and apparently Arnold von Lensberg. And Hunter loves them. So we got the kids' opinions up a bit, which is nice, you know. Uh, theoretically, when this guy comes back, who is starting to look like a freaking amazing diplomat? There's going to be problems with his intrigue, no question about it. We'll try and find him a nice, uh, intriguing wife. <laughs> but temperate, charitable, kind, these are all things I'm okay with. Again, it might make this guy a little easy to push around, but stewardship... That's good to have. Diplomacy is going to be very helpful um, on both fronts. And the loss in the intrigue, that does kind of suck. But we'll figure that out. We got relations with the Pope going. How's Ida looking? She's looking pretty good too. You know, eight years old, five diplomacy. That is not bad at all. So we'll just have to, have to find her a nice husband who will support us with alliances. Um, maybe someone who could take on Swabia. So I'm looking at Bavaria actually would potentially be one of the best allies to get. As tempting as it would be to bring the Babenbergs in totally, um, maybe not. So we'd want to make sure... Hmm, yeah, we'll have to sort that out when she's old enough to get married, because I'd want to make sure... Are you not going to end your plot? Okay, so here's a great example of auto-ending plots not working. 
Blessings upon you and your house. I have discovered... You should bless our house. I have discovered a plot where Count Guglielmi of Bur... Guglielm of Burgundy seeks to fabricate a claim on the Duchy of Upper Burgundy. And he is not going to stop. So this guy, right here, is becoming a bit of a problem. What we could do is just imprison him. We have a 42% chance of succeeding. So if we take our marshal, put him there for a couple of days. We'll wait till October 1st here. Let him get his whatever he needs set up. We have a 57% chance of success based on our relative state intrigue. If we fail, he might declare war on us or flee to another court. Perfect. So we were able to easily imprison him. That is lovely. And... <clears throat> My other vassals would be angry if I did this. But only by 20. Only a knock of 20 relations. And if we take a look at our relations... I wish this only showed me when I click on it. Because now I gotta go through and find me. We should be above the Babenbergs. Where is my white eagle on a... There I am. Okay. <clears throat> so, all of my vassals kind of like me already. So, Ulrich here, he's at a 52. This Ulrich here, he's at a 58. Humbert is at a 2, which kind of sucks, but we could get that back. And Cardinal. So, we got a Cardinal in our realm. He's at 100%. He likes us. That's great. We should have no issue then in revoking this guy's title. So we should theoretically have that come to us, right? Yep, there we go. So now her demonstrator is up to two. We took the richest lands in Upper Burgundy and um, we're sitting we're sitting pretty pretty. I don't know necessarily if we need to start pressing a claim against Geneva then. What I might do is just take a look at my vassals and see. Um, yeah, I mean, even these counts, it's not where it should be. Like, obviously, it could be higher. Heirs being educated with a foreign culture? Hold the phone. Dutch! Well, hopefully he doesn't become Jer or Dutch. That would be a letdown. He's 12. What 12-year-old is taught by a Dutchman and then is like, you know what? I'm not German anymore. I'm Dutch. That doesn't happen. Anyway, we got that done. We're going to have to wait till uh, St. Patrick's Day to pull Gottfried out of Burgundy here. But we've got ourselves a much stronger military. Potentially far more money and um, a great start in getting the Habsburgs to be where they should be, i.e., you know, whoops, <laughs> ruling everything. No, no, no. Ruling Burgundy. And on that, I think this is going to be a great place to leave the first episode. So we will clear all this out. Habsburgs. Is that really all that's... Hmm. I wonder what happened to all the other save games. I'm a little concerned. Maybe it's because I turned Sunset Invasion off? I'm not sure. Because I know for a fact I certainly haven't cleaned these out. Regardless, we'll give that a save. And... There we go. So that was the first episode. Like I say, with this being the first episode of a series, if this is the style of game that you guys want to see more of, if this is, if, you know, if this is why you're here, and I would imagine, considering the years that I've had grand strategy games on my channel, this is the reason why some people are here. So uh, please leave a like, leave a comment. Let me know if this is going to excite you guys, if this is, you know, what you're looking for. Um, the plan for the series is 
full-on grand campaign. So Crusader Kings 2, obviously, into EU4. Hopefully all of the expansions that are coming out for these games aren't going to wreck that. We'll have to see. I might have to do some trickery and figure things out. Um, but I'm hoping that won't cause an issue. And then from EU4 into Victoria 2, if I can. I know there is a converter or two kicking around. We'll see how well those work. And then depending on the geopolitical situation, if it makes sense to convert to a Hearts of Iron game, I might take a look at doing that. I'm no good at Hearts of Iron 3 especially, but I would consider it. Um, but we'll have to see, because Hearts of Iron is so railroaded, right? You need three power blocks in the world for it to work. Maybe Hearts of Iron 4 is going to be different, and this series is going to take a long time. I would imagine by the time we get to Hearts of Iron 4 time frame, Hearts of Iron 4 will have been released. We'll see how that all works out. Um, but that's... Yeah, really, that's for the future. So, enough rambling, enough jibber-jabbering. Thank you all for watching this video. That doesn't sound right. Thumbs up if you've enjoyed this video. Leave your comments, questions, concerns, thoughts, jokes, musings, what have you below. I've been saying this for years. And um, sometimes I still get it wrong. Thank you all very much for watching. And we'll see you next time.